my creative friends, Karen Virtual, Creative Katie here. Welcome to an art journal tutorial. Today we're using watercolor pigmented powders like these color sparks from Crafters Workshop. This set is called Alpine and I'm using Wisteria and Turquoise. I'm also using my brand new Tracy Scott stamps. These are the two packages that I'll be using later on. I'm working in my repurposed recipe binder. It's a smaller page. The papers are like manila tag. And I've gessoed over a little bit of the text there, but basically I'm keeping this as a raw page. Now, when I get new stamps, or stencils, what I like to do is, you know, take them out for a test ride, get ink on them, get paint on them, give them a try. I want to stamp with them and see what comes to mind. So I'm just taking these stamps and I'm going to use them in the background to just create some pattern and some design, all the while just getting used to the shapes and the designs that are in them. I'm loving this stamp. I can see myself using this motif a lot in a lot of different ways. And that's part of this exercise. Now the color sparks that I'm going to be using are highly pigmented watercolor powders. As such, they are water activated. So we're going to be dealing with how to deal with that within a mixed media piece where you're adding layers. So back to the page. So now that I've got some pattern down below, I wanna add some texture to the page. And I didn't want the wait time of putting modeling paste, so I grabbed my thick gesso and I am pushing it through this screen view stencil. I love how sprays and watercolor goes into the nooks and the crannies of texture on a page. So I want to try that with these uh, color sparks. When you put gesso on a, on a stencil or modeling paste, you really do need to take the time to clean it right away or put it in a tub of water. Otherwise, you're going to wreck your stencil. And I just spray it with my Murphy's Oil Soap and, and dish, dish detergent and water mixture. That's my multi-purpose cleaner. So the color sparks comes in sets of three and I'm using the turquoise and the wisteria from the Alpine set. And I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna add the lime green, but I decide not to. I've read a little bit, you need to give these a good shake so they come out easy, and then you're going to sprinkle them on the page. Now you can sprinkle it onto the dry page or you could spray the page first with water. Either works and is going to give a slightly different effect. So what you need to do is, again, play with your supplies. Get used to it. So I'm spraying it with this water bottle. That's the wisteria color. And here's the turquoise. And I'm putting a lot of water on here. Now, in hindsight, this page got fairly wet because it is raw paper and it's not even mixed media paper. I think I would have been better off if my background was watercolor paper or mixed media paper or if I had gessoed it. But I love how it bursts this color and you get these unexpected patterns and you get some white space, which I am challenged with. I love this look. The problem is this will become water activated. Now I've taken those colors, those pigments, and I've put them in these paint palettes and I'm just reactivating it with water to, in order to get some liquid paint, liquid color, I guess, and I can drip it on when it's wet. And that gives me a little bit more control. You can drip it on and spray it, and it's more where you want it as opposed to sprinkling it. 
Again, two different effects. I'm trying to find my way of using this within my mixed media piece. I'm unsure where to go. I'm liking the white space, so I'm just taking the time to get out my black acrylic paint, which is the only paint I think I use. I'm not sure if I use white gesso later or white paint. So I'm just edging this, and that's just framing it, giving me think time. Now that pattern that I stamped there with Tracy Scott stamps, they all peek through little bits here and there. And that was their purpose. But we're going to come back and use those a little bit more in a few. Now I wanted some more black, mainly to build up some contrast. So I thought, okay, I'm going to splatter. Maybe that will give me what I want. And I'm liking that look. And the splatters work really well with the watercolor pigments, with that watercolor look. Now, because this is water activated, you need to set it before I add any wet medium on top of this. So I'm spraying this with Spectrafix. It is an all natural fixative. I've given it, I will give it two coats and let it dry in between. The Spectrafix you can spray inside. If you don't have Spectrafix or don't want to spend the money, because it is a little bit more pricey, you can buy a workable fixative from Krylon. And I'll put a link to both of those in the description box. Now I had some stickers that I had made with these colors and I'm putting those circle stickers on this page, mainly because they were colors and I just was playing around. I had recently revamped my studio, found these, put them aside, said, you know, I really need to use this part of my stash. So I'm putting the circles on here, but I really have no plan. And that's okay. I'm grabbing this shape landscape stencil from the crafters workshop and I want these circles and I'm going in and I'm not sure if this is white paint or white gesso and I'm just adding some white dots. I'm interested in adding a little more pattern, a little more white to this. Sometimes when you're in the midst of a page, it's like, yeah, I need circles or I need white. You just follow those instincts. I love this shape landscape stencil because it's got four different patterns on it. So you get a lot of bang for your buck. After giving that a dry, I grab the shape landscape stencil in the six inch side and I decide I'm going to put some black circles. I'm thinking I, I have the black splatters, but there's not enough contrast. So I'm putting that in there. Remember, this is the background. This is not the focal image. I'm planning on putting something else on here. Now, those circles that I put, the sticker circles, one, they weren't adhering because I didn't put them on with gel medium. And two, I didn't think they did anything, so they came off. This is a piece of rice paper that I sprayed the color sparks on and dried it. Now I'm stamping with Tracy's stamp. And I think this is the ETS 45. The other one was 44. And I decided I'm going to make a flower using this part. So I'm stamping with the archival ink because I want to keep it permanent and cutting it out. Now I'm taking those and creating my focal image. Recently I made a butterfly with some of her stamped elements from this set. Today I'm making a flower. And I like the motifs on there. They read with the stamped images that I, of hers that I put in the background. So it ties it all together. And it also has some of the round shapes that I have in the stenciling that I chose to use. And of course, it's that beautiful wisteria color. And they've been sprayed with 
the Spectrafix as well. So they're not reactivating now as I glue them down. And I am being a little careful where I'm putting the wet medium and dragging it and I'm looking at my brush if it's starting to pick up color and it does a little bit, I'm just cleaning that off so I don't spread that where I don't want it. Remember, all, the, all these wonderful supplies, watercolor supplies, water activated supplies, are usable. You just have to maybe add a couple steps in or change how you do things. Now I'm loving the flower, but it's not really standing out. You can't see that it's a flower. So now I'm going to do some things that are going to bring it out. And the first thing I'm going to do is do some shading with my angle brush and some white paint with my float acrylic technique. And you can see this is just bringing out those flower petals, making this focal image stand out, which is what you want with the focal image. This white is also reading really well with the white background. And look at that, guys. I've got, I kept white space in the background. Now, if I hadn't sprayed this with Spectrafix or a workable fixative, the white would turn this purple shade. It wouldn't be as white because it's going to soak up the pigment. And that's a different look, and that's fine, but that's a consideration. Now I'm shading with black around the focal image. And between the black and the white shading and highlighting, I'm making this flower stand out from the background. I recently reorganized my studio and I am resetting everything up and testing it out and there will be a video showing my new space or new improved space or different space. Now I'm using the black paint to shade around the outside to get a little bit more. I want to really frame this page, bring in all the elements. Since I'm do using new stamps and I wanted to focus on them and new powders, I also wanted to, you know, keep the rest simple. I kept, chose colors that I'm happy with. I use this Tangled Vine stencil just to add the, the leaves to this flower, and I painted a stem in there. But you could have freehanded that. I'm just showing you. You can use a little part of a stencil as well. And I'm giving that a dry. I like how the circle in the middle of the flower is kind of playing off the circles that I stenciled in the background. Now I'm grabbing this Sakura pen. It's a bowl jelly roll pen and I'm adding a little more details to the flower. I'm coloring in some of this. Now this bold tan, and I'll put a link to it, is permanent when dry. Now if I took a baby wipe I could get rid of it right now. But if it dries like overnight it is because pretty much permanent and I love that and you get a nice opaque white. My second choice for white would be the Unibol Signal but it is not permanent. Doodling on stamped images isn't something that I do a lot of. It's something that I've watched Tracy doing a lot and I like the effects so I'm starting to play with that. 
try it on. And there is no rhyme or reason to this. I chose to bring out the circle elements to tie in with the circle elements in the back. But you could have outlined or filled in any part of this stamped image. And everyone's going to give you a slightly different effect. But I'm loving Tracy's stamp here because of the versatility. Wanted a little bit bolder, a little bit more. I'm just adding a little bit of line work, kind of sketchy, not solid at all on the flower. And then I decide I want to make the stem stand out just a smidge more. Loving that element, that's really going to be used, that part of that stamp, on, on many backgrounds. So now that I have my focal image, I'm looking for a quote. I'm going to my Through the Garden Gate sentiment pack, and I pulled out some options. And now I'm just going to try them on i want do they are they big enough or small enough for the page how do they match i like this one that it's longer this one it's not bold enough it's not standing out i like the saying with this one and i find it bigger now with my sentiments if you buy my digital sentiments there is a video that i've made that shows you how you can resize them so you can print them off any size you need to fit the page. So if like this one, you want it bigger, I can do that. If I was making, and I wanted this saying on an ATC, I could make it smaller. And it's just using the settings of your printer. And my sentiments are available at ninniesnapkins.com at their digital downloads. So you get them instantly. And then you can print off on whatever papers, sticker paper, tissue paper that you want. Now I have this chalkboard masking tape that I bought at the dollar store. And I'll see if I can find something similar in Amazon so you can look up look at it closer. It's got a scalloped edge, but I'm thinking I want a little more black to set off some of this sentiment. So I'm cutting it and I'm going to back it up just to bring out the sentiment, sentiment a little bit more. I did play with it under Blossom. I didn't like that look. So I peel off the backing and stick it down. I think I add some gel medium. Here I'm taking pictures of the different arrangements. What do I like best? And then you can just scroll through and make a decision because sometimes if you're just looking a little bit further away it comes into view so there I'm peeling off the backing and sticking it down I did come back and have to add gel medium and this here I'm using gel medium or matte fluid medium to glue it down I could have also have used this uh, chalkboard masking tape and used my white glaze pen, not glaze, sorry, white uh, jelly roll 
and written my own sentiment on them. So they're great for that. Loving the colors here. Love how the, the color sparks, watercolor background worked. It was very quick and easy to use. Grabbed my fine line applicator bottle, and I'm just going to go around. Now the back, we have a lot of colors seep through. So either I'm just going to embrace those colors make it part of that page, or I will probably do collage papers on there, and that'll just cover it up. But that's because this wasn't watercolor paper, it wasn't even mixed media paper. And I didn't gesso it. Close-ups are coming, give me a thumbs up, Tell me about your experiences with watercolor powders of whatever brand. Share this with your creative friends. Subscribe to my channel. And if you aren't getting notified, you may want to try unsubscribing and then resubscribing and selecting the notification setting. Thanks so much for joining me. Happy creating.